All right, welcome to Freeze Mage. This is a deck which is kind of infamous, has been around for a very long time, has survived the nerfs of old, has some new tricks to it, but the general concept is simple. The idea is simple. You stall the game with early game cards like Mad Scientist, Loot Hoarder, Acolyte of Pain. You draw a bunch of cards with Arcane Intellect and Acolyte of Pain. Uh, you stall even more in the mid-game with cards like Blizzard, with the combination of Frost Nova and Doomsayer to clear the board. Uh, you do some very light clearing with Frostbolt. You do need to keep one Frostbolt in order to finish them with the Ice Lances at the end. Emperor Thorsan when you have a bunch of cards to reduce them. Uh, pew Pew, more freezing, some flame striking, and at the end you play Alexstrasza, their face, for 15, and then you finish them off with something like Fireball, Frostbolt, Ice Lance, Ice Lance, that's uh, 17 damage. Or you finish them off with Archmage Antonidas, uh, reduced cost spells, get more fireballs, then finish them off in two turns. You survive in the later game when you need that one extra turn with Ice Block. Fairly straightforward plan, albeit it's a little bit tricky to execute sometimes. One of the worst matchups for Mage is Warrior, and I'm not even going to say Control Warrior or Patron Warrior, although Control Warrior is a lot worse. Uh, Patron Warrior is still bad because they can play their Armor Smiths and then Whirlwind and then gain a bunch of armor, and it's pretty scary. The matchup is really tough, but it's possible to win still, to some extent. Well, I mean, it's always possible to win. It's just hard. Uh, in the early game, you're looking for the draw cards, and you're looking for Mad Scientist, so this is a pretty good result. I got Mad Scientist, and I got Acolyte of Pain. If you're finding that the ladder is full of warriors, Freeze Mage is probably a very bad deck to play. But when there aren't a lot of uh, warriors out there, this deck can be rather monstrous. Uh, trying to get the Acolyte of Pain out to draw more than just one card. Acolyte of Pain, Fire Blast is a common turn. There's no need to be too terribly concerned if, in the early game, uh, not all the mana is used though it's nice. Uh, looks like the opponent is a patron warrior um, because he ran Dread Corsair and Gnomish Inventor. Well, there is no hard uh, and fast rule of thumb for Frost Nova and how to use it, but generally, I mean, it, it just depends based on your health total. Generally around like 7 to 10 health is a good time to start thinking about using it. Um, uh, by 7 to 10 health I mean it stops 7 to 10 health of the opponent. With this deck it's often uh, a little bit concerning. Especially if you're holding the coin that you might overdraw by leaving an Acolyte of Pain out, so watch out for that. Uh, here, by the way, he can overdraw me by sending a Death Bite into my face and then attacking my Acolyte one more time. But that's a big enough spend of resources on his side that I'm willing to take the one card overdraw. In fact, he just used Death Bite uh, for no benefit other than forcing me to overdraw a card, so that's an exchange which I am perfectly content with. Uh, sometimes you'll randomly burn your Alexstrasza and that'll suck, but hopefully not. Let the pain speak to me. My hand is too full. A fireball. Alright. Uh, slightly disappointing, but fine. The thing to realize is even though burning a fireball is bad, what's really good is that he was he had to use the last charge of Death Spite to like no benefit other than burning me for a card there. So 
it's often give and take. Um, I happen to have a lot of cards already, so I think I'm willing to develop this Acolyte of Pain and not necessarily get full value out of it. Uh, one fortunate thing, sometimes the deck doesn't work that fortunately for you, is that um, I was able to draw cards which could be played so that I wouldn't hold a card, uh, I wouldn't hold a handful of cards that I couldn't play. So basically I had mad scientists, I had secrets, and perhaps even better is that the mad scientist will actually get a secret, sometimes your fortune isn't that good. Um, Blood Mage Thalnos is often a card that you just cycle, but against the warrior, oftentimes I find that uh, getting the extra bit of spell damage out of this could be important. Alright, looks like he's uh, offering up a three card draw to me, uh, so I guess I say thank you here. Though that might be too many cards for me, but still I'll take it. Really hoping to draw into, um, I was going to say Emperor Thorstan. Alexstrasza is interesting, because I can actually play Alexstrasza here. Um, that is too big to ignore right now though. No, I will play Alexstrasza. Well, I will burn the coin first, though. The tricky part about this deck is finding the timing, because you have to do uh, the Alexstrasza and then something, but the problem with Alexstrasza is it costs 9 mana, so it's oftentimes you have to be able to be in a position where you can play Alexstrasza and not die. Um, and yes, I'm not going to die here because of an ice block up, but oftentimes it's not quite good enough to, to play Alex Straws and then have your ice block broken immediately. Uh, you would often need to have the other ice block immediately available. Here though, I don't think he's going to be able to burst through for that much damage. He could, but I'm hoping he doesn't. Also, I'm burning one more card. And that was foreseen, but uh, getting out the Alex is really good. Okay, no, like, perfect. Uh, three, five, eight. I would use three cards and draw two cards, so that's good. Uh, currently, I have 10, 16, 19, 23, over, well, not quite, 4, 6, 7, 26. I could just Pyroblast his face, and if he doesn't gain more than 3 armor, I win the game. No, oh, I can't actually Pyroblast his face. But that is the way to start thinking about it. With this deck, you often have to plan uh, two turns ahead. And the nice thing is, you're insured often that you are going to get the second turn. Uh, this deck really likes having its spells reduced with uh, Emperor Thorisand, but no such luck this time around. So I have to make a decision here, um, Flame Strike or Pyroblast into a lot of damage next turn. That'd be 10 damage to him and then he would be at 15. And then uh, I have basically the super combo, Fireball, Frostbolt, Ice Lance, Ice Lance, Thalnos. Uh, 6, 9, 13, 17, plus 4 is 21. So that's basically 6 over what he's got and I believe this is uh, likely to work at the moment. So I will go ahead and just carry that out. Uh, Flame Strike likely also leads to a win, but in this case I have Ice Block as well, and I'm just going to go for the win a turn early. If I didn't have the second Ice Block in my hand, I would have more strongly considered Flame Strike, because there are ways where the opponent can gain a lot of armor here. 
Uh, notably with Armor Smith, Armor Smith, Whirlwind, Whirlwind. So, the plan shown pretty well here. Uh, a few ugly points because of overdrawing, but the overdrawing is a thing that'll happen every once in a while, hard to avoid. Uh, if the opponent is actually committing resources, like he did in this game, to overdrawing you, that's more often good. You freeze, you uh, stall, you ice block to survive that one key turn, and then you burn them, usually in this fashion. Sometimes it's Pyroblast into this, sometimes it's Archmage Antonidas into this, into another Fireball turn, but you're going to need to set up like two consecutive turns where you're doing it. The setup is like 1, Emperor Thorasan, 2, Alexstrasza, 3, you play Archmage Antonidas and you throw some spells at him, and then finally 4, you unload this uh, final set of spells. Uh, it's usually a 4 turn set which you have to be able to ease into. Can be a little tempting to keep the Frostbolt, uh, assuming that he is aggressive. Uh, in fact, I will here. Just because the Mana Worm, in particular, can deal so much damage. If left unchecked. Pretty much looking, again, for the card draw. Uh, and in this case, against what I expect to be an aggressive deck, I'll keep the Frostbolt. Someday I'll be just like you. It turns out to be pretty common with this deck to go, uh, let's see, to do something along the lines of turn 2 Fire Blast, turn 3 Fire Blast. Here I'm gonna go turn two fire blast, turn three fire blast, turn four fire blast, turn five fire blast. Slowly whittle down those cards. Something that is really good in this matchup is if they have a mirror entity, your doomsayer will get copied over to them, and then you will be able to instantly clear their board. Uh, at this moment, he doesn't have enough to justify me doing that. Um. Possibly a mistake on his side to voluntarily play a mirror entity. Possibly. Put this apple on your head. Come on. Ugh. I need him to commit more stuff onto the board. I will uh, be willing to take the damage one more time. It is. Mm. It's not just five, it's closer to something like, uh, I'm going to estimate nine right now. But the Doomsayer is going to clean up things so well that I cannot resist. Especially since this uh, spends the turn pretty well. The light does not wow. Okay, he took the barrier. Um, not sure if that's better or worse, to be honest. But the good news is I took a lot less damage than expected out of that exchange. The end is coming! The end is coming! Oh, that. <laughs> I guess I should have done Blood Mage. No, 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 I can't do that first, of course. Against aggressive decks, uh, you can Alexstrasza yourself, and that can work out pretty well. Um, Anti-Killbot. Anti-Killbot plus Ice Lance might buy me extra turns here, so that's uh, going to be worth it. Yeah. 
Uh, pro tip, if you kill Boombot during your turn, you can actually lose the game. Because the ice block is not uh, active on your turn. Do the way secrets work. He didn't break my uh, ice block, so that leads me to think that he doesn't have any burn in his hand right now. Oh, that's a really good result. Okay, and I'll add in the Doomsayer. I had to think about whether or not to go Acolyte of Pain or Doomsayer here. It would be difficult to utilize a Doomsayer in the future, so I'll use it with the freezing effect. Uh, not as much as I would hope, and he does have a Pallid Sky Golem, but fine. It slows him down a bit. That is a really big mistake, I think. No, it's not that big a mistake. If it is one. Unfortunately, no spells to play with Archmage Antonidas. No, oh, wait. Oh, he drew into the fireball, that's right. Um... Okay, looks like next turn is Archmage Antonidas plus Ice Block. I'll show them. I'll show them all. Unfortunately, he's going to have the means to kill the Archmage Antonidas on the board. So perhaps it isn't Archmage Antonidas Frost Ice Block. Flame Strike Ice Block, though, provides no extra thing. So here's the problem with uh, Freeze Mage. When you fall behind, uh, you do need to have like a certain order of how things occur. And in this case, I'm a bit too far below behind the curve to make this happen. When you've used the second Ice Block and you haven't uh, gotten your opponent down into Burn Rage, then you've definitely lost. Just thinking if there's any interesting way to get out of this. I think I do have an out, and you play to your outs. Uh, ice block into Flame Strike, into top decking Alex Straza. Uh, his other mirror entity is in his hand, and note that I didn't attack him because he has Ice Barrier. I probably should have taken my card last turn. I should have. I made the assumption that it would be okay either way, but it wasn't going to be okay either way. Nope. Well played. You win this. I'm in generally a. Uh, I don't. I'm a little cautious to say generally an easy matchup, but things to watch out for are that the shaman has no healing, I guess, and can't armor up, and usually doesn't put on quite that much pressure as other decks. Uh, things to watch out for when you're playing this deck against other classes is. Post Alexstrasza, oftentimes opponents will save their healing, so you can't just necessarily count on, okay, I'll need to do exactly this much damage. Uh, however, against Shaman, you can just plan around. Post Alexstrasza, you need to do 15, and that's it. But against a Druid, they'll often save Ancient of Lore. Against uh, any deck, they'll often save Anti Killbot uh, for after Alexstrasza.
don't want to play Acolyte of Pain straight into the tank. Um, so good news and bad news. Bad news is he's Mech Mage, which is a Mech Shaman, the faster version. Uh, might be able to run me over. Good news is he has a very, very slow start. I'm going to attempt to stay on curve, uh, which is actually more important against a aggro deck. So the plan is the Frostbolt Fire Blast Spider Tank next turn, and then Acolyte of Pain Fire Blast next turn. Shaman does run two Earth Shocks generally, so Frost Nova Doomsayer on turn 5 would be good, but sometimes he can just get out of that. You are allowed to use one Frostbolt. And sometimes in extreme circumstances against Aggro, you're allowed to use both Frostbolts. And then the Ice Lances will uh, go towards freezing their things. This turn uh, developed a lot of pressure, so I'm feeling nervous. I had to do a pretty slow turn. But hopefully it is this turn in which uh, stabilization starts occurring. I have a lot of freeze. Six damage is obviously not outside of a shaman's reach, but... It can be a little tricky for them to get there. I think I'll use the cheap freeze right now because developing uh, cards alongside the Frost Nova seems to be good right now. And I will play the more expensive Acolyte of Pain, I believe. Trying to stay on curve. Oftentimes, uh, with Freeze Mage, these games. Do you feel like you're walking a tightrope? Alright, unfortunately that's the uh, Lava Shock Enabler. Uh, ugh, okay, he broke it. Huh. Noyatron. Well, it's all like cards for me. Can't flame strike to remove this thing, so it has to be Blizzard. And then I do die to quite a few things. Somewhat noteworthy is that, well, Earthshocking his fire elemental means I lose. So I do lose to Earthshock, and I lose to um, a few things. A spell damaged uh, Lava Shock also does it. Nope, I think he just missed lethal. Oh my gosh, you don't deserve it. You super don't deserve it! You faint! Okay, that actually turns out to be a really good hand. Uh, a little surprising is that this deck can hold its own and is even said to be favored against Face Hunter. Um, this is nearly the perfect hand. You had the draw and these two cards, which will buy you a lot of time. Mad Scientist is even better, though. That mad son. Okay. Yeah. Alright, well this opening is strongly rigged on my side because he missed his 75% and I got a very good start. Um, 
side note is it's good to get rid of the secret first before you draw the cards with Arcane Intellect for a slightly less chance of drawing the secrets. Very low pressure from the opponent so far. So it's looking like I might have a smooth ride. The web spinner, uh, along with his low aggression in the early game, indicates that he is a mid range hunter as opposed to a face hunter. I have a rather unusual first world problem where I have some really good board clear but he has no board. <laughs> he somehow had nothing to play on this turn. It means he absolutely has a Savannah Hymen. So here we're going to uh, look into the rather unusual play of Doomsayering a empty board. Um, you do this when you have a really good read that the opponent is about to do something on his what next turn. You might still play the Savannah High Main into it, but I'm happy to break it with Doomsayer. And if it buys you a turn, then that's uh, usually for the best as well. Uh, one of the setups where you... One, one of the ideal setups that you get into is turn 8. Uh, Doomsayer with some kind of freezing effect, turn 9 Alexstrasza, so you start on an empty board. Uh, I'm actually tempted to Doomsay again right here, because with such low aggression, it is very likely that the opponent has Owl or a play, and if I buy myself two turns here, I'm actually just thinking that's really good. Uh, hunters will usually run an Owl, and since this guy maybe two owls and since this guy uh, had so few cards that he could play uh, pre-turn six it's super likely that he would be able to stop this in some way like hunter's mark and then like unleash or hunter's mark weapon or something so buying the turn right now is really good it puts pushes me towards turn 9 where I can Alexstrasza and then the follow up turn is Pyroblast and then the follow up turn is hopefully I draw 5 damage or 1 damage, actually I already have lethal because uh, Pyroblast plus Ice Lance, Ice Lance plus Fire Blast is good enough and here you can see that it was in fact going to get something that's not a surprise um, Looks like this is going to be a very straightforward turn 9 Alex, turn 10 Pyroblast, turn 11 kill him. Very good start and slow hand from him, but it required a little bit of knowledge of what was going on with his hand. Happy to break that because it actually means Alex Straws is also a threat. And he'll have to deal with Alex Straws in some way. Although I suspect that he has a Hunter's Mark. But if it Stalker Booms going in there, then that just makes my chances all the better. I'll show them. I'll show them all. You'll very rarely be able to have such a relaxed game against Hunter, but if he had a better uh, board, he could have gotten wiped out with Frost Nova Doomsayer somewhere in there. And this is exactly the position where you want to... I mean, obviously it's the position you want to be in. I'm something like two or three turns ahead of schedule. Um, I could still buy something like three more turns perhaps with Frost Nova and Frost Nova. Uh, but usually you're only like one turn ahead and it's important to be that way. 